Okay, so uh, now we're going to just give a couple of examples of uh, uh, other alternative norms on vector spaces other than Rn. And so I've brought back over here our definition of a norm on a general vector space, which needn't necessarily be Rn. And of course, the theorem, again, I want to emphasize, what the, the first instance of a result that we can get that applies to any norm because we got the result from just n1 to n4. And so, uh, a couple of examples here. Let's say our first example is going to be C uh, of, z of the interval 0, 1, which is the set of all functions from the interval 0 to 1 that are real valued and continuous, such that, and I'll write it here, such that f is a continuous function. So the set of all continuous functions defined on the unit interval uh, on the real line. Now we haven't yet done anything with continuous functions but we're going to do that shortly. So this is a little bit of a preview, some, something kind of in advance, okay? So this is the set. So before we talk about a norm on the set, first, if we're going to do a norm on the set, it's going to, the set's going to have to be a vector space. Now remember that the set of all functions, forget about the, the continuous part, the set of all functions that are real valued on any set, we've already shown, we called it script f of x, we've already shown that the set of all such functions is a vector space. So all we would need to do to show that this is a vector space is to verify the two, the first two properties of being a vector space, v1 and v2. Recall that, that was, we showed that when we were talking about uh, subspaces earlier. So this is indeed uh, the continuous functions. This is indeed a subspace of the set of all, the vector space of all real valued functions because whenever I have two uh, continuous real valued functions uh, and I add them together, I get a, a continuous function. The sum of two continuous functions is continuous. You probably have done that back in your first calculus course perhaps to show that when you add up two continuous functions you get a continuous function. In other words, V1, the property V1 closed under vector addition is satisfied for this subset of the set of all functions. And similarly, when I take a continuous function and I multiply it by a scalar, that's also a continuous function. So V2 is satisfied. So this is a subset, a subspace, a vector subspace of the vector space of all real valued functions on 0, 1. So it's a candidate to have a norm. So the norm that we're going to define on this vector subspace uh, of the space of all real valued functions on 0, 1 is going to be this. So remember, a norm has to, is a function that maps vectors, and in this case, vectors are these functions, okay, they're the elements of the vector space, and maps them to non-negative real numbers. So this is going to be the maximum of the absolute values of the f of x's such that x is in the interval 0, 1. Now, uh, this is a vector space, so it is a candidate, as we said, uh, to have a norm defined on it. And we have defined now a function that takes vectors and assigns each vector a non-negative real number because f of, for every x, f of x is a real number, maps in the, into the reals, and it's the absolute value of f of x, so it's a non-negative real number. So this is a function from the vector space v. Oh, and by the way, another aside here, notice now that this set or this set, they're the same set, the, this set is playing the role 
a V, and I guess I even made it the same color. I did the V over here in a kind of a yellow gold. And so uh, this set is playing the role of V in our definition of norm, uh, or this set, whichever way you want to circle it. Um, and so uh, the one thing we have to verify is that this uh, definition actually satisfies N1 to N4. And before we can do that, we have to say, I said that this was actually a function that assigns to every vector, every function here, uh, a non-negative real number. Well, that wasn't necessary. We have to actually prove that. So to verify that this will always be well-defined, this actually comes from, so let's actually write this, uh, let's write this here. So this is well-defined, let me write well-defined over here. This is well-defined according to the the Weierstrass theorem. That's something that you've probably seen before. We haven't done it yet in here. I think we will do it a little bit later. Uh, the Weierstrass theorem tells us that if we have a continuous function on a closed and bounded set, a closed and bounded interval in the real line, uh, that continuous function will actually attain both its maximum and its minimum. It will actually have a maximum and a minimum. And so this actually exists. This is well defined because we're talking about functions that are continuous on a closed and bounded interval. So the maximum for any such function, the maximum will always exist. So this is a well defined, so this is a well defined function from vectors in this vector space to uh, non-negative real numbers, and then we have to verify that it satisfies n1 to n4, and that part's actually easy. Okay, the Weierstrass theorem is a little deeper, actually, uh, but once we ha have that this is well-defined, n1 to n4, pretty straightforward. Uh, a second example. And that example is going to be the set L infinity which is the set of all sequences of real numbers. And we know we've used that symbol, that notation, R infinity, as the set of all sequences. So the x's that are vectors in this vector space here, we've shown that to be a vector space, the vectors in here are sequences. So each vector has the form, uh, let's uh, write it over here, uh, each of these vectors is an x1, x2, dot, 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 like that in R infinity. This is the set of all, this L infinity is the set of all sequences such that x is a bounded sequence. So this is the set of bounded sequences. Again, we haven't defined that yet, so I'll put it in quotation marks. We're going to do that shortly. So the set of all bounded sequences is a subset, of course, of the set of all sequences, consists of sequences. And we have shown that the set of all sequences is a vector space. It turns out that it's easy to show that uh, this subset, the bounded sequences, is a subset that satisfies both V1 and V2. So this is a subspace of this and therefore a vector space in its own right. And since it's a vector space in its own right, it's a vector space, and so it's a candidate to have a norm. And so here we're going to use the norm of a sequence, of a bounded sequence. This is L infinity, so it's actually a generalization of this, this norm up here. That is the well, it, I would say it's the maximum of the absolute values of the components, but the problem is the components might get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and so there might not be a maximum. This says that can happen. They're bounded. 
But even if they're bounded, they could be getting larger and larger, getting, for example, closer and closer to one, but never being one, always a little smaller than one. So it could be a sequence that approaches one, has one as its limit, but is never one. So, uh, so the maximum wouldn't exist. This wouldn't exist. But the supremum, which we're going to talk about shortly, does exist for bounded sequences. And so this is the supremum of the set of all absolute values of the terms of the sequence, uh, such that i is in n, the domain of the sequence, which of course is a function. And so, of course, this is, we could have just written this one, two, da, 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 like that. All right? So, again, this is a well-defined norm because this exists, this exists, by the way, in fact, let me use uh, this color here again. So, here, this is well-defined according to the Weierstrass theorem. This is well-defined according to the least upper bound property of the real numbers. So in both cases, I have to actually verify that the norm is well defined by verifying that what's on the right hand side always exists and is a non-negative real number. And so in both cases, I had to do that and I had to use some result uh, that we, in both cases, results that we're going to see a little later, uh, to verify that. So indeed, this does exist according to the least upper bound property of the real numbers, and it's a non-negative it's obviously going to be a non-negative real number because these are absolute values of real numbers here. So it exists. And again, once we know it exists, it's straightforward to prove that n1 to n4 are all satisfied. So just like up here, this is a norm on this vector subspace of a space we're already familiar with. Just as this is a vector subspace of a space that we're already familiar with the set of functions on the real valued functions here. And both of these examples are ones that will show up later in this course and will show up in doing economics uh, as you move forward in your program uh, of courses in economics. Um, both of these uh, are vector spaces. This is a vector space. Oh, and again, let's say down here, this is playing the role of V in our definition here uh, of a norm. And uh, so both of these are norms on a vector space. In both cases, the vector spaces very much are not Rn because in both cases, they are infinite dimensional vector spaces. So each one has a basis, but the basis is not finite dimensional. And uh, in each case, if we didn't restrict ourselves to the continuous functions, we wouldn't be able to apply the Weierstrass theorem. We couldn't guarantee that this, in fact, this wouldn't typically exist. We wouldn't have a norm. So it's restricting to continuous functions that makes this work. Here, it's restricted to bounded sequences. If we work with all sequences, we wouldn't actually have a norm. This wouldn't be well-defined. And that's an, kind of an important uh, issue, an important problem trying to deal with the set of all sequences. So if we deal with just the bounded sequences, or as we're going to see, just the convergent sequences, then we will be dealing with a vector subspace, a vector space, uh, where we actually can define a norm even though the vector subspace is infinite dimensional. So uh, that pretty much wraps up what we want to do with the norm except for one thing. We want to then go on to in a sense, generalized to talk about metric spaces. And so uh, what we will do, since this is going on a little long, is we'll take a break and then we'll come back and spend a few minutes talking about metric spaces. Okay, so that's it for now. We'll be back in a little bit.